It was the middle of winter. The wind was blowing cold and the sidewalks were covered in snow. A businessman had just finished work and was leaving his office. As he walked out the door of the building, he saw a young boy sitting on the side of the street. He was dressed in faded shorts and a frayed shirt and was shivering in the cold. Hey mister, give me one penny, shouted the boy. Leave me alone, bellowed the man, as he quickly got into his car and drove off. The businessman had carved out a successful career for himself in the finance industry. He had a lot of money in the bank and owned a big house. Despite all this, he never gave so much as one cent to the poor. Whenever people asked him why he didn't give to charity, he just told them that he wasn't in the business of paying people to be lazy. Later that evening, when he got home from work, the businessman pulled into his driveway and was shocked to see the young boy standing at his front door. Hey mister, give me one penny, said the boy. Without a second thought, the businessman roughly pushed the boy aside and entered his house. He sat down in his living room and turned on the television. His wife came in carrying a tray and placed his dinner in front of him. As he was eating, he happened to look out the window and saw the boy standing there, clutching himself and trying to keep warm in the freezing weather. The man let out an exasperated sigh then got up and pulled the curtains. The next morning, when he was leaving for work, the boy was still there. Hey mister, give me one penny, said the boy. The irritated man ignored him and got into his car. His wheels spun in the snow, showering the boy with sleet and ice as he drove off. That evening, when he returned, the boy was waiting for him. The man was fed up and dug deeply in his pocket. He took out a copper coin and threw it angrily at the boy. There's your damn penny, he shouted. Now get out of my sight. The boy picked up the money and left without saying a word. After work, the man walked out of his office, expecting to see the boy, but the street was empty. He drove home, expecting to find the boy waiting for him, but there was nobody in his driveway. He walked into his house, kissed his wife, ate some dinner and watched some television. The boy seemed to be leaving him alone. In the middle of the night, the businessman was lying in bed with his wife when he felt a cold little hand on his shoulder touches. He heard a voice whisper in his ear, Hey mister, give me one penny. The man screamed in fright and jumped out of bed, but when he switched on the lights there was nobody else in the room. His wife calmed him down and told him he must have been dreaming. He lay down, but spent most of the night tossing and turning, unable to sleep. He began to remember something. An incident that had happened many years ago. When he was a young boy, he and his gang of friends had been the school bullies. All of the kids had been afraid of them. There was one little boy in particular that he had bullied every day. The boy's parents were very poor and couldn't afford to buy him new clothes. He recalled how he had often teased the poor child. At other times he had beaten him up and stolen his pocket money. The businessman's memory was foggy. As morning approached, he climbed up into the attic and dug out his old school yearbooks. Flipping through the pages he found the picture of the young boy he had bullied mercilessly. The yearbook dropped from his hands. It was the same young boy. Gradually, his memories began to grow more clear. He recalled the day he and three of his friends had dragged the poor boy down to the local river. After beating him up, they threw him into the icy waters and walked away without giving him a second thought. The next day, the poor boy didn't turn up in class. He and his friends simply assumed that the boy's parents had moved him to another school. The man didn't sleep at all that night. At breakfast, he didn't eat a thing. He had completely lost his appetite. Cautiously, he opened the front door and saw the little boy waiting outside in the snow. The man could barely breathe. It seemed as if the boy's piercing eyes were staring into his soul. He fell to his knees and begged the boy for forgiveness. What do you want from me, he cried. It was so long ago. We were children. There were others involved. I wasn't the only one. It wasn't my fault. The boy just stood and stared at him. The man took a wad of bills out of his pocket and thrust them at the boy. Here, take this, he said. 
It's all the money I have in my wallet. The boy took the money from the man's trembling hands and disappeared without saying a word. That evening, the man came home and ate dinner. He had regained his appetite and felt much better. His conscience was clear. During the night, he woke up feeling thirsty and went downstairs to get himself a drink. He stopped in the doorway of the kitchen. In the pale moonlight, he could just make out a small figure lurking in the darkness. A voice whispered, give me one penny. The terrified man ran out of the house and jumped into his car. He drove to the nearest bank and waited until it opened. Then, he took out all his life savings. He sold his house with all the furniture inside. He sold his car, his television, and even his wife's jewelry. He put all the money in a bag. Every penny of it. Later that day, as he was walking down the street, the boy stepped out of an alleyway and stood in front of him. Hey mister, give me one penny, said the boy. The weary man laid the bag of money at the boy's feet. This is every penny I have, he said. Take it and leave me alone. The boy picked up the bag and disappeared without saying a word. The next night, the man was lying in a doorway, struggling to keep warm. He was dressed in an old pair of pants and a frayed shirt. Around him, he was clutching a dirty blanket, trying desperately to fall asleep. Suddenly, he heard soft footsteps approaching in the darkness. They came to a stop right beside him. The man slowly turned and looked up. He saw the boy standing over him. What do you want? screamed the man. I gave you everything. Everything. There is nothing left to give. That's all I have. The ghost boy smiled and said, No, mister, that's not all. He reached out, tore open the man's chest and ripped out his heart. Bloody Laundry is a scary story about three girls who encounter a ghost called the Bean Nye. They say that anyone who sees her is doomed to die. There were three girls named Taylor, Susan, and Jamie. One cold winter evening, they were walking home from school together when they decided to take a shortcut through the woods. It was raining and the girls huddled together under an umbrella. The path they took followed a crooked stream that ran through the woods. The light was quickly fading and a fine mist settled over everything. The woods were eerily silent and, in the gloom, the branches of the trees looked like gnarled claws reaching out to grab them. All of a sudden, the girls spotted something that made them stop in their tracks up ahead, they saw a figure crouched at the edge of the stream. When they went closer, they realized it was a woman. She was bending over and washing her clothes in the water. The woman was creepy looking. She wore a ragged gray shawl and her long black hair hung down over her face. The clothes she was washing were stained with blood and the water in the stream.
Me too, Susan chuckled. The girls were hungry so they decided to go downstairs to the kitchen and fix themselves a snack. Jamie lit some candles and placed them on the table to give them some light. It was pitch black outside and her parents wouldn't be home for hours. The girls raided the cupboards and made themselves some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. As they were eating, Susan suddenly began to make a gagging sound. Her eyes grew wide and her hands clawed at her throat. She was choking. Jamie flew into a panic as she tried to help her friend. Susan was coughing and spluttering and her face was turning bright red. She fell to the ground and stopped breathing. Jamie didn't know what to do. She screamed and pounded on Susan's chest, but it was no good. The girl was dead. Jamie just sat there on the floor covering her face with her hands and crying uncontrollably. She looked down at her friend. Susan's face was purple and twisted in a grotesque grimace. Her lips were blue and her tongue was thrust out. It was a disgusting sight. Jamie couldn't bear to look at her any longer, so she got a blanket and draped it over her friend's corpse. She ran to the phone and tried to call her parents, but there was no dial tone. The lines must be down, she thought. She took out her mobile, but there was no reception. In desperation, Jamie ran out of the house and went to try and get help. It was freezing cold aside and the night was as black as pitch. She trudged through the snow, shivering and shaking, but she got disoriented and didn't know where she was going. Her teeth were chattering and she felt like she was going to freeze to death. Eventually, she was forced to turn back. She managed to make it back to her house and when she got back inside safe and sound, she breathed a sigh of relief. She set about warming herself up, rubbing her arms and legs to get the circulation going again. Jamie was afraid she would get sick, so she went searching for some medicine. She stumbled down the darkened hallway and made her way to the bathroom. Rummaging through the shelves in the dim light, she found a bottle, opened it and gulped down the contents. All of a sudden, she began coughing and spluttering. A horrible pain shot through her whole body. She felt like her throat was burning. Her stomach felt like it was being torn apart from the inside. The room began to spin and she fell to the ground, writhing around in excruciating pain. Just then, the lights came back on. Jamie looked down at the bottle she was holding in her hand. Through her blurred vision, she could just about make out the label. To her horror, she realized that what she drank wasn't cough syrup at all. It was bleach. One morning, at breakfast, my husband seemed very tired. His face was pale and sweaty. When he reached out to pick up his cup of coffee, I noticed his hand was shaking. What's wrong? I asked. Did you get enough sleep last night? I don't know, he replied. I'm not sure if I was sleeping or if I was awake. Have you ever had a dream that felt so real that you weren't sure if it was actually a dream? He paused for a long time before continuing. Last night, I had one of those dreams, he said. In the dream, I woke up in a cold sweat. My heart was racing and I was breathing heavily. I went to the bathroom to get a drink of water, but something didn't feel right. I looked up and saw that the ceiling wasn't there anymore. Instead, it was as if I was looking up out of a grave. I could see the edges of the grave above me. There were people gathered around the graveside, but I didn't recognize any of them except for one man. He looked exactly like me. Same eyes, same nose, same face, same everything. He bent over the grave and peered down at me. A broad smile spread across his face and he said, you've lived long enough. Time to let someone else live for a while. 
I went back to the bedroom and lay down in bed. I can't remember if I lay awake or fell asleep. The next morning, when my husband came down for breakfast, he looked even worse. His hair was disheveled and his brow was dripping with sweat. I had the same dream again, he said, his voice shaking. He wouldn't say anything more, but as he left for work and kissed me goodbye, I could see the fear in his eyes. I began to get very worried. My husband had always been a calm and relaxed individual. Now, it seemed as if he was turning into a nervous wreck. Every night, for the rest of the week, he had the same dream. Each morning, before he left for work, he would tell me about the dream. His face grew gray, his eyes became haunted and he began looking gaunt and sickly. I decided that it was time to have him see a psychologist. However, on Saturday morning, he woke up much later than usual and when he came down for breakfast, he looked as if the extra sleep had done him some good. He appeared to be healthy and vigorous again. Did you have that dream again last night? I asked. He looked up at me. A broad smile spread across his face and he said, What dream? I have no idea what you're talking about. The Wristbands is a creepy ghost story from Korea about a doctor who has a close encounter with a ghost while working the night shift at a hospital. In Korea, when a patient is taken to hospital, a white wristband is placed on their left arm. These wristbands contain the patient's name and information. When a patient dies, a red wristband is placed on their right arm and they are taken to the morgue. In one particular hospital in Korea, a young doctor was working the night shift. It was around 2 a.m. when he finished his last operation. He was on the fifth floor and pressed the button for the elevator. The doctor was tired after a long day and was looking forward to the end of his shift. At 2 a.m., the hospital was very quiet. Most of the patients were asleep and many of the nurses had already gone home. He entered the elevator and there was just one other person there. He casually chatted with the woman while the elevator descended. The elevator stopped at the basement and the door opened. They saw an old man dressed in a white gown standing there. The old man was about to get in when the doctor suddenly slammed the close button and punched the button for the fifth floor. Why did you do that? asked the astonished woman. I've performed a lot of operations, replied the doctor. I've seen a lot of people die. When a patient dies, they get a red wristband placed on their arm. The woman was silent. You saw it, didn't you? said the doctor. That old man. That old man had a red wristband on his arm. A red wristband, said the woman as she raised her right arm. You mean like this one? 